Shake it out, loosen up a little bit. This is the Gun Talk After Show. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's serious, but it's always worth it to hang around for the after show. A lot of times we cover topics we either couldn't get to or didn't want to put on the radio. If you're on hold, stay right there, because we're calling Tom back to the microphone for a little more fun. Show producer Jim Kinsey will be here along with Michael and Michelle. Now, the Gun Talk After Show. All right, and we are into the after show now. Hey, glad that everybody could be with us. If you're on hold, we're going to get to you in just a minute. Here we've got, uh, let's see, Michael, Jim, Michelle, and Tom all lined up. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. So we kind of went uh, afield. I didn't know we were going to get into the whole open carry thing, but it just it came up again, and it took on a life of its own. And I was glad that C.J., uh, C.J. Grisham called. He's the president of Open Carry Texas. And I know he's saying, well, you know, we're not doing that anymore. But, you know, honestly, I mean, the whole, I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about that. This is the guy, of course, who has the, the video, the YouTube video, where he's carrying openly and gets stopped by a police officer and ends up getting himself arrested. And, of course, he has video rolling the whole time. So let me ask you, when you're rolling video and you're carrying openly, aren't you expecting a problem? Well, it sure seems to me like you're inviting a situation to happen. I just wonder, why else would you be rolling video? If you Don't you think, oh, I'm going to open carry, and that's going to provoke something, and I want to be sure to catch it on video. Michael? I think it's sensationalism. I think it's for YouTube hits and popularity. I think it's an ego booster, and it does more to harm everyone else around the person than they feel harms them. Well, flip it around for a sec, Tom. Now, if they're rolling video, and the cop comes up to him and says, hey, you got a gun there. He says, yeah, that's my legal right. And the cop says, you know, you're absolutely right. Carry on. They would never post it. No, I think I, <laughs> you're, you're right. right. <laughs> yeah. But I do believe that, you know, you get a lot of these people with these YouTube channels, and I think that, you know, the, the more unique hits is that's all they care about. And I think that's why a lot of them do it. I don't think that happens with everyone. Of course not. But And look, I, I do not doubt the sincerity of the open carry folks in Texas. I, I do believe they're trying to push to get open carry for handguns. I just think they haven't studied what has happened before you know if you don't know what works and what doesn't if you didn't know okay well that's what cost california it's open carry the guys who finally came out with the long guns forced the legislature to simply ban open carry altogether handguns and and long guns they just haven't done their homework and now for them to say well we stopped doing that and they're oh whine 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 they're showing pictures from five months ago five months is nothing people that that in the viewpoint of the public, Michelle, what do you think? I mean, I hate to go to you and play the uh, the woman card every time, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the only woman. Yeah, but you're the only woman. You're the you're what we got. Come on. It's, well, I'm, you know, I'm just thinking that most most mothers, most women, when they see these stories about these guys, it's going to scare them. It does scare them. And there was a caller that had called in and had said exactly the same thing. When you see certain types, and I'm going to do air quotes around types of rifles, it automatically stimulates a reaction and it's scary because unfortunately our media has put certain guns out there as being assault weapons which they're not we all know that but you Mm -hmm. know that that's where they go you know it's a classification that's unfortunate we have to do a lot of work to get past that and this is not helping Well, what about the incrementalization tom i mean basically our gun rights weren't just taken away they've been chiseled away right we have some open carry rights it doesn't mean you go full force, okay, we're going to bring a Panzer tank into this Chipotle. <laughs> I mean, what about, you know, working it back? Okay, we got some rights. Let's, first of all, let's not screw them up and have them impeded again. And let's, mm-hmm. we, there's ways to ease into these kind of things. Because yeah. 40, 50 years ago, you could carry a rifle in, right? First, do no harm. Figure out, okay, yeah. is this going to help us or is it going to hurt us? How do we know that? What's the reaction going to be? Uh, have we looked at how we're going to be perceived? Are we controlling our message? If you're not controlling your message, somebody else will control it for you. They lost control of the message. Well, I'll tell you what, Larry's on uh, line four. He's got a thought on this thing uh, out of Arkansas. Hey, Larry, how you doing? Okay, Tommy, you doing all right? 
Yeah, doing they great. Are, I mean, the, the idea of property owners uh, being able to tell you to carry or not, what do you think? Well, I think the uh, property owner's uh, right should over, overrule your right uh, to carry in there because it, it's their their property. They've mm-hmm. got the investment in there, and to force your rights on them, it's just like uh, I would compare it to the uh, government telling businesses whether they can allow smoking in there or not. I mean, let, me, let me jump in because smoking is not a right. Gun right, ownership yeah. is a right. Carrying guns is a right under the Constitution. I would say rather than your comparison with smoking, how about you can't say you can't have any, we're not going to allow any blacks in here, or we're not going to allow uh, different groups in here. How is it that that's, they're not allowed to do that, but they can say we're not going to allow you to exercise your Second Amendment rights in here. I would put well, it a lot closer to that than the smoking analogy. Well, I would I would point out the difference in that. You don't have a choice of whether you're black or not. You have a choice of whether you carry a gun or not. Yeah, and, and, I'm not uh, I'm not sure how that uh, that applies. But uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm following you. I'm tracking that you're thinking the the property owner's rights trump our Second Amendment rights. Right, and I'm I'm extremely pro gun. You can't mm-hmm. uh, you can't find anybody that's uh, more advocate. But I don't think we should have taken an in-your-face attitude toward our right. Well, what and, do you uh, do if, if there's a business that says uh, you can't carry here? What do you do? I don't patronize that business, and I let them know why. Okay, fair enough. That, that's that, that's fair. Here's a question for you. Some of these places are saying they're not going to put up no gun signs, because a lot of the states you have to have a sign up for it to be legal. They're just going to make a statement. We just ask you not to bring your guns in. There's no legal requirement that you obey that. Now what do you do? Well, uh, okay, it's my prerogative whether I uh, consider that or not. Exactly. You know? I, I agree it with is. you. So, yeah, it's your choice. You can go or not go. Uh, yeah, I just hope people are smart enough to figure it out. If You know what? If you're carrying concealed, nobody knows it, and you're not causing a problem. So, you know, there you go. Larry, listen, thank you for that call. Uh, Jim, thinking about that, if you elect to go in to a place that has said, okay, we would prefer you not to carry here, but it's not a legal requirement. If you're carrying concealed... Who's going to know? Who's going to know exactly? I mean, how many places... I can't ask you this. How many places have you gone in where you're not supposed to carry? I won't ask that, Tom, but... I, tr- I try not to. I'm sure that I have at times. You know what I have done? I have gone into places, had a meal in a restaurant, and then on leaving it, saw a sign on, like... A little corner on a door mm-hmm. that was really hard to see. I didn't see it when it came in. And you go, well, you know, that's just kind of the way that goes. But, you know, it was concealed. The only reason that somebody would have known about it is if I had to pull it out. And if I had to pull it out, then I would worry about the explanation part of it later. Yeah, it's your second problem. Where my that's wife work, works, they have a no gun sign. And they have it in the bathroom in the back of the building. So it's not where you enter the store. It's in the, <laughs> So they can appease the lawyers and say, yeah, we put the sign up. Oh, but wow. it, nobody can see it. That's interesting. So they're they're hitting a checkbox, but they also don't want to drive away business. They're smart about that, too. Yep. Amen. Fascinating, uh, t- I tell you. Have you guys ever seen anybody carry, uh, first of all, how about carrying openly? I don't know if you can. Now, you're in Ohio. Can you carry openly in Ohio? Yes. All right. Do you, do you see anybody or know anybody that carries openly? I do, yeah. and I, well, I don't personally unless I'm at my house working in the yard or in the house. But, yes, I do know a few people that open carry all the time. And like you said, they dress like a good person. And mm-hmm. they don't draw attention to themselves. Uh, you know, uh, that's, the, I think, the main thing. They're, they're not looking to get attention. Look at me. I got a gun. Check it out. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah nice sling, fella. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got the, the cobra skin sling going for you. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's working. Yeah. Work it. But we're not talking about rifles here either. We're no. talking about pistols. And there is a group here in the area that does and just had an open carry parade where they carry, you know, rifles. They've got a banner. They've mm-hmm. got signage. They check it with the, the, the police first. And they do a little parade down public sidewalks. And I don't believe that draws anywhere near the negative attention because you can see what they're all about. It's right there on the banner. Well, you know, and I'm thinking about CJ's call. And it was, I'm really glad he called in uh, the head of Open Carry Texas. He said they've stopped doing that and that uh, this anti-gun group has taken their stuff and taken old stories and making political hay out of it. And, of course, they are. But now I'm thinking, okay, now what? What, if anything, can these guys do to further their cause? Any thoughts? Or are they just hosed? They think there's still room for them to be able to come back from that. 
on the political side of things, of course, you have to be careful of who's elected into office and how any of that information can be used in the future. But, you, you know, do they have something to make up for? Yes. I had said to Michael while we were on a break, I said, you know, carrying firearms and believing in the ability to carry firearms is, is much like your Christian faith. You're supposed to have witness and testimony, but you're not supposed to stand on the corner necessarily and shout it out at everybody. <laughs> Yeah. And and firearm carrying is the same thing. I think in controlled environments and with open conversation and the ability to have questions come back and forth, you know, I think they can still move forward and I think they can get something out of this. The thing is they got to use good tact and know what the ultimate purpose is of their cause. I think they're going to have to reinvent themselves. Right. You know, you got to keep in mind, too, anything on the Internet is on the internet forever even if you remove it that that being yeah. said you can right. have that those pictures pulled down don't give ammunition uh, to pardon the pun to groups that don't share your belief structure don't give them a reason well it doesn't matter what you do no there's but you're, always you're, you're, there's you're always them. a way to be able to use it against you and i just you know keep that in the background of everything it's I mean, all about context and they take it out of context and use it against you. That's the problem. Exactly right. Tell you what, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll, uh, we'll get uh, Tom on here with his thoughts on a deer rifle here. We'll take a quick break. Be right back. Here's the deal. We're ammo to go. Ammo? You need it. We've got it. Low prices. You want it? We've got it. Selection and fast shipping. Yeah, we've got that too. Rifle ammo, pistol ammo, tracers, magazines, targets, ammo cans. Come on, sure we've got all that. Primers, pepper spray, knives. Hey, I'm just getting started. You need it, we've got it. Ammotogo.com. Ammotogo.com. All right, we are back. Let's uh, go straight to the phones. Line three, Tom's with us out of Marshall, Texas. Hello, Tom. I just wanted to uh, follow up on a topic you had about uh, the deer, a deer rifle, mm -hmm. uh, caliber, and so forth. And uh, let me relate a story to you. My first deer rifle was a 243. Upon the recommendation of the most highly respected sportsman of my generation, uh -oh. uh, who was your dad? Yeah, I, I knew was, that was coming. <laughs> I, I was a student at Northwestern in Natchitoches, and three or four of us got invited to go hunt in Tinsaw. Well, we didn't know a, a deer rifle from a kitchen spoon. One of, the guys said, mm -hmm. one of the guys said, I know Grits Christian. He, and so he called your dad, and your dad graciously invited us into his den. We talked about deer hunting. He said, fellas, I'll tell you this. All you will ever need to hunt deer in North America is a 243. And I guess all of us went out and got 243s. But <laughs> that's all I've ever used upon your dad's recommendation. And I still, uh, I remember that conversation like it was yesterday. And, and it still works, just, doesn't it? Yes, it still works. And I still hunt. And I still pass 243s down to nephews and nieces. And I just... Uh, I've had that story for a long time, and I've been wanting to call you and tell you, but uh, I, I, this is the first opportunity I've had. But uh, your dad uh, made that recommendation, and I still hold true to it. It's pretty hard to beat a 243. There's almost no recoil, which means that people shoot it well, and now we have really good bullets for it, even much better than when uh, Dad was you know, talking about it uh, 20, 30 years ago. The bullets are so much better. And you know what else you could do? You can build a really lightweight rifle around a 243 because there's no recoil. Good for girls, too. My wife has Good. one. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. You Tom, go. listen, I appreciate that. I appreciate the, uh, uh, the memory. Dad did love his 243s. He ended up, he kind of went back and forth between the 243 and the 7mm08. When the 7mm08 came out, he really liked that for a little bit bigger game, elk. Neo guy, things like that, but for whitetails, 243 will do it all. And now, guys, you know what's happened is a lot of people are using 223 for deer. With the right ammo, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's legal in most states now. It used to be you had to use something larger than a 22 caliber, but a lot of states have made it legal to hunt with a 22 caliber, which would be a 223 or, you know, 556. AR-15, basically, is what we're talking about. So there you go. I mean, it's again, it's about good bullets. Oh, we did some bullet testing this week, too. Uh, went, out, went out to the range, line up lots and lots of water jugs and shoot them and see, you know, what goes through. And 
we were actually shooting two, two, three with different kinds of bullets and trying to show that it's really critical to choose the right kind of bullet for whatever it is you want it to do. And that's true for defensive ammo for handguns as well, because we did some uh, full metal jacket versus hollow point expanding and showing the penetration versus the expansion. And the, of course, we shoot uh, blowing up water jugs in slow motion. High speed, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to do the high speed camera on that one because it's just so cool. <laughs> in case a water jug ever attacks you, you'd have the proper ammo for it. I have made my entire perimeter safe from water jugs. <laughs> <laughs> the marauding water jugs. That's right. We are ready for it. Say you want to go hunting deer. Uh, how do you, Is there a good resource to find out what's better? I mean, aside from the internet forums and everything, because everybody's mm-hmm. got an opinion on the internet. Uh, you know, is there a good resource other than calling you to find out the best kind of ammo? At 3 a.m. At 3 a.m., yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, there are actually uh, some good websites. Interestingly enough, the manufacturer of ammo, the, the guys that make ammo, mm-hmm. they have good websites, and you can go in and say, I'm looking for uh, deer, and they'll say, okay, the 243 is good for deer with this bullet. You need a 100-grain bullet or heavier. If or if it's a Barnes, probably a 90 grain bullet or, or heavier because the Barnes bullets perform well at lighter uh, weights. If you went to a 7 mm 8 and it would say, okay, this is a good caliber for deer, a coyote, elk, sheep, you know, that kind of a thing. So it will kind of put you in the right category. And it'll say, if you're going to be hunting deer with this, you want a 120 grain bullet versus the 75 grain bullet, which is really designed for fast expansion. So that's what you'd hunt coyotes with. So if you go to the website of the people who make ammo, they want you to choose the right caliber because they want you to have good success. But you know, I mean, Nosler, Barnes, uh, and really any, any of the people who make bullets and ammo. And I would do both. I would consider getting some information on bullets. Uh, and Jim, you remember you know, way back when uh, I got you into the, the Cartridges of the World book, which is like- <laughs> Cartridges the of the World Unite. Book. That's the one. (laughs) It's a fun book because you just kind of flip it open anywhere and you read about a cartridge. And the more you cruise it, the more you learn about ballistics and what cartridges are are good for different kind of game and all of that. I know that people are not into guns would think we're just stunningly geeky. And and they're right, of course. (laughs) Yeah. And your point is? Yeah, right. Exactly. But haven't you enjoyed that book? I like it because you can see not, not only modern day cartridges and how they've evolved, you get some really oddball stuff that hasn't been produced in 20 years, but there's still specs on it, and it gives you a little bit of a history behind it. I'm a geek. I mean, it's whether it's sound stuff or video or guns, it's I got to see the tech side of it. So hey, you, you know, got to wear that geekiness like a badge of honor. <laughs> That's right. You know, be proud. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the other thing you can do is jump on uh, eBay and get you uh, used, or even uh, I, I, they probably even have them on. Uh, what am I thinking of? Amazon used loading manuals from Spear, Sierra, Hodgden, Nosler, and it doesn't have to be the latest one, but they'll have a write-up on each of these cartridges, and you can just sit down in your easy chair and flip through, and you go, well, I didn't know that. The 6.5 by 55 Swedish Mauser is one of the oldest cartridges. It's been around for 120 years, things like that, and you just, it's like little bitty, you know, 200-word chapters in a book. Neat. Plus, it makes you the man at the range. That's right. You know. <laughs> so if you could pick up an old loading manual, uh, I mean, obviously a new one fi- is fine too, but even a, an old one has information about the cartridges. And the only thing I would say is you should not use old manuals for your load data. Correct. I want to mention that because... Uh, well, the powders the powder, have changed, yeah. The powders change, exactly right. And the primers may change or the bullets. If you say, well, it's a 100-grain bullet. Yeah, but you know what? If it's a 100 grain bullet and it is an all copper bullet, the pressures could be higher than if it is a lead core bullet. So you cannot interchange. So if you're gonna do loading, go ahead and invest and get the latest load manual. Or these days, they pretty much got all the load data on the websites. You go to the Nosler website Mm -hmm. and they've got the load data for all those. Go to the Barnes website. They got all the information. You could have your iPad up there by your loading bench and use that for your you know, your source. So it's pretty cool what we have available now. Do you know how I reload, Tom? How's that? I call Mike McNett at Double Tap. <laughs> That's right. So. I'm reloading my supply, yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's, we go to the store, I put down some money, I bring it home, I reload my shelf. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. You're a reloader. That's right. I am a reloader, by golly. All right, here's a question for you. How much ammo is enough? I, do you ever have enough? <laughs> I, w- I was going to say, personally, I don't ever have enough. <laughs> All of you are going, 
<laughs> I don't understand the question. Yeah. <laughs> it's rhetorical. <laughs> Let me see. If I want to shoot, mm, I never have enough. <laughs> yeah, that's well, true. Well, I'd say as much as you can carry, but you also want to have stock, so that shoots that out the window. Okay, if you guys are shooting and you're not reloading, do you pick up brass? Oh, yeah. I got a whole closet full of it because I have friends that do reload, and I get a better deal if I give them the brass. So you're a closet brass hoarder. I am. found out this out about you. Okay. <laughs> He's one of those. Well, you know, I do uh-huh. teach a lot of classes, and if the, if the range that I'm at doesn't pick them up, I mean, well, don't let them go to waste. you got to clean up after yourself. That's, so. that's money on the ground, That's too. exactly right. 20 cents, 20 cents. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Now, are you selling the brass? <laughs> Uh, I can. I have. I've taken it to gun shows before and sold it. What's it uh, going for? Well, it depends on how much you have and the caliber, but I mean, I've easily, every time I've done that, I've paid for my admission and maybe a snack for food or something by just taking in a, a small five-gallon, even less bucket full of brass. You just negotiate with the guys and give me give me five bucks for this. Oh, okay. And they're happy, you know. <laughs> but like yeah. you said, it's money laying on the ground. There's no reason to leave it there. Yeah, exactly right. It's, it's there. All right, I'm going to put out the pitch one more time for the folks who are just tuning in to the, uh, the after show. If they would go to the website change.org, do a search for my name, Tom Gresham, go down to where it says uh, Welcome Lawful Gun Owners, and just sign the petition, send that in. We'll see what we can get done. Oh, by the way, somebody called earlier who said he just heard about a report. Two officers shot at CC's in Las Vegas. At least three dead. An officer involved shooting at CC's Walmart on Nellis. That's in Las Vegas. So that just happened. So don't know what the story is there. But uh, if you do some searching, you'll find uh, Las Vegas PD is involved in a lot of shoots. I don't know if it's a factor of the the city, the crime there, or what the story is. But uh, that I think that's what he was referring to when he said there was something going on at a Walmart. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. So there you go. All right, guys, look, have yourself a safe week. Get out and do a little shooting, okay? Absolutely. Take care. Take care. Talk to you later. You've been listening to the Gun Talk After Show. It comes up after the regular radio broadcast right here. You can download it on your pod or you can listen to it right on your computer. This is where Tom, Jim, Michelle, and Michael hang around and have a little more fun doing what they do best, talking about guns. Check us out online at guntalk.com and we'll see you back here next week.